I can't believe the news today. Hopefully, Greg and Mike will make it do okay. Read all about it. Oh, Jesus Sunday Christ. papers, baby. It's not Thursday. No, this is the fucking monster. The Sunday edition. It's big. It's fat. It's Mike. It's me. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I got to do that. That was you walking into the room with your arms above your head? Yeah, that's how I walk in the room. So we've been talking about tech stuff for the last <laughs> 20 minutes. We're already 45. exhausted because yeah. it didn't go well. We're trying to figure out different ways to record this, and you just burst out of the gate. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> it's like you don't understand what it's like as a stand-up comic. I'm uh, at the Green Bay Chuckle Hut on a Friday night. It's midnight. I miss my family. The opening act has his girlfriend in the room who won't <laughs> shut the fuck up. And now I got to go up in front of 200 drunks. So you got to you got to yeah. be able to make that transition. I have a I have a Ritalin pill, right? Should I write on on this it's right there is a little yellow pill. Hey now. I'm, I'm thinking of popping that at some point. I haven't had a coffee today cuz I'm trying to keep my voice from uh failing. Well, that'll so be we'll good. See. Then the Ritalin will kick in just as we get to the Sunday funnies. All right, I'm going to take it now. Here it goes. There we go. There we go. I'm in. We're I'm gonna on see drugs. the difference. And kids, drugs. kids, this is not, uh, this is not a uh, anyway an endorsement of taking drugs. This is work. You got a prescription for that shit, right? Of course, All of right. course. The guy on the corner, he he makes me hand him a post it. <laughs> the kid, the high school kid on the corner. The high school kid. We keep it formal. Yeah. It has right. to be Venmo, but you know whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and he's going to fail this semester because he doesn't have any fucking Ritalin left. Honey, we got you all the help you wanted. You haven't finished a single thing you started. <laughs> well, yeah, Mom, Dad, the good news is, have you heard Sunday Papers? It's really good. By the way, since I started selling that old man my Ritalin, they now have a Thursday Papers. <laughs> like, the effect is clearly measurable. <laughs> You got to think of the greater good, Mom. Stop focusing on me so much. <laughs> well, welcome, viewers. Another week. This, they're going by too fast, man. Speaking of viewers rather than listeners, you know. Oh, we, I meant uh, listeners. I meant listeners. I'm from TV. What do I No, know? but we're getting more and more people watching us on YouTube uh, on the Greg Fitzsimmons page. Check it I out. I don't like that. I don't like that we're. First of all, I don't like that people know what at least I look like, but also that I'm in my closet and uh, I don't know. I, uh, it, it affects cause I, I've noticed I get, I, I'm like quirky. Well, now everyone's, who's not going to now try to find a way to watch this quirkiness. Right. But like, I don't know, like when I think I'm invisible, I'm like waiting for you to finish a line and I'll be like, I find myself doing almost like a weird things a musician would do Uh huh. for timing. Like I'm waiting to, yeah. and I'm reading when I would chime in with my dumb zinger or whatever the hell it is. Right. So, well, this I is just, not how I normally look. Well, ju just watch TikTok instead when I'm talking. That's what I do when you're talking. Aren't people working out? or so I can't imagine working out to this shit, though. Oh, no. People definitely. I mean, that's. I think that's like number the, maybe the number one way people listen to podcasts is while they're working out. Yeah, clean. I imagine cleaning would be great. Yeah. Like when it's a free pass. Like, yep. You have to drive somewhere. Perfect. You're getting two things done at once. I get that. I guess working out's the same, but how is anyone motivated listening to this? Um, by the way, but that song. Uh, but that song, they could have uh, pumped it up on the treadmill to that song. Mitch Robinson doing an amazing U2 cover of us. That yeah. was fucking hilarious. That that's what we're looking for, folks. I was fooled. I thought it was Bono. And I'm like, why is you 2 submitting? I thought it was uh, uh, um, Bono. What's his name? Sonny? Sonny. Sonny Bono. Sonny Bono All right. now. That's the clip for this week. Yeah, well, last week, we're trying to think of a clip, you know, to give you guys online, which is on our Instagram accounts. And Gibbs wants to do this clip of me Literally the most embarrassing, biggest bomb of the episode was me doing a joke. <laughs> a joke of what was it even about? I forget. Uh, <laughs> oh, reindeer. Was, oh, reindeer. Reindeer. <laughs> reindeer. But you're but you're so funny when when you fess up to uh, bombing. <laughs> I 
I've had one of those weeks. I just haven't had time to go. I would have looked at it, but I was like out all day. I was fucking active this week. I did a lot of shit. You got the virus. No, all safe. All safe. Nice. Um, so no corrections this week. So I guess we fucking nailed it last week. No, someone okay. corrected something. Of course we got things wrong. I don't think so. I think we got everything right. Oh, someone wrote about uh, Milcher, or Milch, I guess. Uh, Melcher? David Milch. No, David, isn't it David Milch? Um, oh, he said he did not write on The Wire. That might be correct, because I sometimes, it was such a seminal thing, NYPD Blue. Yeah. That uh, And that's what he co-created, that I, I sometimes will conflate that with The Wire. And uh, when the guy wrote that in, I did not, I'm checking right now on IMDb, and um, I did not, in fact, look it up, but I <laughs> wrote just... back. I wrote back to the guy. No, you're wrong. <laughs> and then, and then, I, yeah, then I think he got you. Then he wrote back. Well, then you should tell IMDb. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! There's also a David Melcher who was a lieutenant general in the uh, in the army. No, so. I think it's Milch. Oh, David Melcher. All right, whatever. So we right. got one wrong. Right. Uh, should we get to the front page? Oh, boy. Here it Let's goes. Let's do it. Extra! Extra! We all about it! Extra! All right. My absolute favorite news item of the week comes Ooh. to comes to us from people running for office who are getting real happy with Photoshop. Um, <laughs> there was Georgia, Georgia Republican Senator David Perdue had to pull a Facebook advertisement that featured his... Jewish opponent, Democrat something Osef, John Osef, with a digitally altered face. The ad lengthening and widening Osef's nose in an image of him shown over the caption, Democrats are trying to buy Georgia. <laughs> so he made this Jewish guy look more stereotypically Jewish? <laughs> well, a lot of restraint, no horns. He didn't put the horns in. <laughs> Which I think disappointed a lot of his uh, his followers. Wow. Yeah. And what he, he, of course he distanced himself like a lot of leaders, kind of like Ellen's doing, which we'll talk about later. Um, I, he probably said, "Oh, a third party did it or something." Yeah, I think he did say that. Of but, course. Um, yeah. And then but, our, our our good friend Lindsey Graham. Yeah. Uh, he went after his challenger, Jamie Harrison, who's black, by running a Facebook ad in which Harrison's face has been digitally altered to make his skin appear darker than it normally is. Do these people not think they're going to be caught? I mean, yeah, it's also like so predictable. That's their playbook. Yeah. I just think it's fun. How racist are you to put blackface on a guy who has a black face? <laughs> <laughs> like, <what? laughs> and then oh it got God. and then it's it's actually really bad because now they're going after biden and it's all it's these racial stories he's irish and so there's all these videos floating around on the internet of biden talking gibberish and not really making sense oh no that's actually his videos <laughs> i was gonna say wait a minute <laughs> uh Oh, that's crazy. Uh, wow. Well, they're not going to get in trouble. Nope. I don't unless, think. Unless they... What's the Elizabeth Warren one going to be? Well, they're not going to make her look more Native American because uh, they don't want her to appear that way. Oh, so they're right. definitely not going to uh, put a Redskins hat on her or what. <laughs> give her... I can't, give, anything put, I'd say put is some litter on the ground perfect. next to her and just have one tear coming down her face. <laughs> No one remembers that. <laughs> if if you're over, what, 42, you get that joke? I think you have to be older than that still. So this was a public service announcement. Was it just about littering? That, that it was, was about the, littering. And they had a very, very authentic, I mean, he was Native American, but I mean, he was in, was he in full? Full like, feathers, headdress, the leather. Beautiful Buffalo leather jacket leather. with the yeah, fringes. Yeah, he was a full-on, old-school uh, Native American uh, garb, standing on the side of a road, 
With his horse? With his horse. And a car drives by and throws out like a big gulp cup, pre-big gulp though, <laughs> and throws out <laughs> shit and it just smashes on the on, on the ground near his feet. And uh and he starts crying. And it's very weird thinking back on it now. It's like the real crime with that ad is, oh, that's what the Native Americans are crying about? Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Throwing think... an empty soda? Yeah. You know, container out of a, of a passing car? Yeah. I don't think so. Wouldn't no. that be nice? Wouldn't that no. be nice if that was their biggest fish to fry? Yeah. Yeah, I think he was. He had been sobbing. That, that was a leftover tear from the uh, being relocated for the eighth time in his lifetime. Yeah. Wouldn't he be not crying and being like, oh, look, look, well, it's your land now. You're fucking it up. <laughs> you officially have taken all our land. Yeah, it's 100%, right. and now you're, right. li- you're not littering on my land. Mm. Uh, here's another story that will uh, really crack you up. Ooh. A Connecticut man decapitated his landlord, who was <laughs> also his roommate, with a That's sword. That's one way to have a rent strike, okay. <laughs> <laughs> with a sword. After being told he had to move out because of overdue rent. So their roommates, uh, King, the guy who was killed, was an accomplished uh, uh, chess player. Huh. Doesn't He doesn't sound like he was very good. I mean, you, <laughs> chess is all strategy. It's about seeing what your opponent is about to do. Yeah. You also think a few steps ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I did hear he had called. He had called 911, so they have a record, this is true, that he complained that his roommate had been, wave, quote, waving a sword at him in a threatening and terrorizing manner amid a rent dispute. Well, did he not see the possible next move of his opponent? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, his queen was in danger. Queen was in danger. That's That was check. And then by the time the cops got there, it had been checkmate. By the way, you put a lot of emphasis on that he decapitated him with a sword, as if, like, the sword added gravity to the story. I think that's fine. But if it was, like, decapitated him with a butter knife, yeah, it's so much gorier. Yeah. Or a spoon. Right, right. <laughs> His hands. Yeah, that's like getting beat up by a girl. It's much more painful. He decapitated him with his, like, uh, PlayStation controller. <laughs> the old one that has the, the charging cable. That's how he did it, Yeah, as roommates typically do. Yeah. Died at the hands of a man with a Swiss Army knife. Um, but it also makes you think about, like, we've all complained about having bad roommates, but this kind of <laughs> trumps whatever story you had. Because, you know, like, everybody gets drunk and they start telling... There's always yeah. certain themes that people hit on. You, you take turns telling your worst roommate story. I oh, mean, yeah. my, mine was I lived with some football players in college, in the, and we had a kitchenette, and I didn't do the dishes, and so they left them under my covers in my bed and under my pillow, all the dirty like spaghetti pots and everything. That was my worst roommate story. No sword. <laughs> That's because you what paid rent yours? every month. What was your worst roommate story? Well, I might have been the cause of some of them. I mean, you remember at 1056 Commonwealth Avenue, it was not a good idea, but I came home with a mailbox one night, you know, the big blue mailbox from the sidewalk. So I ran into it. What? And you don't remember that? And then we went, we then tried to empty the mail out of it, which is a federal crime. Oh, yeah. Do you remember we had the big blue, by the way, they look way bigger in an apartment. <laughs> than they do on than they do on the corner. How many guys did it take to carry it in? I think four of us. It was a heavy motherfucker. Those are heavy. So what happened is the only one who had sense is like, guys, like this is <laughs> it's like sitting in our apartment. Like, what do you do? You might as well have like someone tied up in a chair. Yeah. Like this is jail time. Yeah, what are you yeah. doing? <laughs> and so then we had to wait till the middle of the night stuffed all the mail back in it and then returned it <laughs> to the place where it was previously nailed to the street. So that was a that was not a good move. I thought it was funny. Did you get any good mail out? 
I think we felt, believe it or not, we had some conscious. I don't think we were, like, you know, it wasn't, it was goofy. It wasn't to steal. Yeah. So I think we returned it all. I, I don't think there was anything good in there. Wow. I know. Wow. Think but, about how um, many breakups you could have prevented. Those <laughs> Dear John letters you could have grabbed. No, I know. You're right. The uh, But this guy, I like the... Um, <laughs> He cuts his roommate's head off, and he's like, then he has to contact his family. Like, Listen, he owes back rent, and now I'm sorry to say he's going to lose his security deposit because he completely stained the rug. His blood is everywhere. Yeah. Triple damages. Sorry. Yeah. Right. Uh, and come here come here and pick up his belongings. His, his, sword, his sword is in the corner. Uh, you're going to need to clean that also. Yeah. Um, here's one that's going to hit me hard, Mike. Okay. Oh, with Japanese a heavy heart. porn. What? A heavy, no, no. Japanese porn is alive and well. <laughs> Just a few keystrokes away. Not only that, I have my bookmarks, and I have a bookmark. You don't, wait, wait, wait. You don't bookmark porn. No, but I don't call it porn. That's the key. <laughs> I call it, one is called retirement. I tried to pick the thing somebody would be least likely to click on if they got on my computer. Uh, well, how about this? When they get on your computer after you somehow die, retirement's going to be one of the first things they're going to check out. <laughs> <laughs> like Aaron, <laughs> Owen, JoJo, let's make sure, you know, he probably had money in other accounts. Let's make sure we have all the accounts. We have everything. Oh, here's one retirement. Let's see what he was planning. <laughs> oh, Okay. He was he was planning to get massaged with a hidden camera in the room to help us. I think we found the reason why there isn't more retirement that we're finding, <laughs> more funds that he saved or made. I think we found the reason to explain the unproductivity. Uh, no, this is what's hitting me hard. President Trump said Friday night that he will ban the video app TikTok from operating in the United States. Whoa. Yeah. He says he's concerned about foreign-owned TikTok, by, owned by China, will be used as a national security risk. There's all these rumors about it uh, being hackable. Rumors! Uh, all right. Well, that's one way to lose all the young votes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. And your vote? He's he's going to lose. Uh, well, actually, maybe. Yeah. More people will vote for Biden because they're not fucking sitting at home in their underwear at four in the afternoon watching TikTok. But he's helped me. Uh, he's going to help me. I'm going to finish some scripts. I spent two hours a day not writing a script because I'm watching like <laughs> I'm watching like people with without face masks yelling at somebody in line at a CVS or. Uh, a girl with no bra dancing to a rap song that has the N-word in it. Little white girls, tits flopping up and down. Or a <laughs> bear or a bear attacking somebody. Two hours a day. I can't go on TikTok just because of all the dancing. I think it's the stupidest, the synchronized dancing is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. Yeah, but it learns that you don't like that. You just hit not interested, and then it avoids those in the future. And if you like something, you hit like. And by the end, you're getting nothing but... Bears attacking people with no masks at CVSs. <laughs> what? And boobs falling out during <laughs> with it. Their, with their boobs falling out. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm in. Where's TikTok? I got it. All right, this is one. You want to read the one about summer camp? Uh, yeah. Oh, my God. This story uh, is freaking people out. A summer camp took almost every precaution yet the majority of kids still got COVID-19. So it's a new report by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. They analyzed 500, and basically 600, it's 597, 600 children and staff who attended the overnight camp between June 21st and June 27th. This is a short-lived wow. camp. Wow. That's maybe five nights. At the end of the week, 76% of campers who were tested came back positive, despite the organizers following most state guidelines set by the governor and the CDC. The study noted that the test results, this is, this is the depressing part, the study noted the test results were only available for 344 of the 597 attendees and thus likely underestimated the total spread at the camp. Wow. Yeah. Well, it's in Georgia. I hope all of those people 
were in state who's going to from out of state be like hey we found a summer camp for you oh where is it oh it's in georgia <laughs> you know with the governor who's like mocking masks yeah right or, or or politicians there i should say mocking masks yeah that's like uh no i'm not gonna say it i was gonna make an aids joke but you know uh <laughs> you a lot of kids for a lot of kids like uh yeah i i lost my uh, i lost my virginity at camp and my fingertips! <laughs> hey, how were your color wars? Well, we won because really it was just Timmy was the only one that could uh, run at the end. <laughs> and he was on blue. <laughs> how was the food? I hear the food is really bad at camp. I couldn't taste anything. It was uh, not a problem. Nobody complained. Did you raid the girls' uh, cabin? How do you think we all got it? <laughs> yeah. So did you have a positive experience at camp? Yeah. Actually, uh, we all had a positive experience. Here's the good news. First camp, a counselor didn't touch a kid inappropriately. <laughs> so that's that's good news. <laughs> By the way, I mean, what vetting? I went to camp. So I went to this camp. Oh, it was awful. My parents kind of lied to me and they wanted to send me to the same camp my sister went to. So they showed me all these pictures of baseball, basketball, and all this stuff. So I get to the camp. Have you heard of this camp? It's called French Woods. It's no. in Connecticut. Okay. It is an actor and performing arts camp. And during breaks, they would play softball. And they on the on the on the grounds that they rented out for the summer, there happened to be a basketball ring. So I show up with my basketball, my glove, explaining this. Meanwhile, the closest thing I could get to fun at this fucking camp is there was one class that taught magic. <laughs> I swear to God, that's what I signed up for. So I was also sent with a friend, my friend Patrick, and uh, so Patrick and I were in the same dorm, and this kid freaked out and started throwing rocks. As, anyway, th there's a bunch of weird stories, but I just remember look, thinking back on the counselors. They were like, I don't think there was any vetting back in our day when we yeah. went away to sleepaway camps or any right. of that stuff. There were right. real like creeps. Like, so, right, we yeah, can but, remember the, but theater girls, they, they can be kind of hot, right? I, yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. But I was th this is like grammar school. Oh, yeah, that's no fun. No. Not fun My only all. camp is they used to. Uh, I used to go to a gymnastics training camp. I was really into gymnastics for about wow. seven years. And uh, this is gonna sound really creepy, but it already does. Go ahead. There was uh, <laughs> the the girls' showers had like a little a woods on a hill next to it, and you could see through. Like you literally could sit twelve feet from the girls' showers and see it. Completely. All open <laughs> stalls, you know, no stalls, just an open room with fucking 16, 17-year-old gymnast bodies. It was crazy. <laughs> just sitting 12 feet away, yeah. staring at the showers. Yes. Yes. I don't Every know why night. you thought this would sound creepy. <laughs> <laughs> totally fine. I mean, I mean what's... what's... It's, it sounds creepy, but what fucking 16 year old boy is not sitting in that woods next to his counselors right hey you guys mind is there any room i found this yesterday guys all the counselors lined up on a bed they move benches in there <laughs> it's just just tissues and lotion that ugh. she all can right, raise enough. her foot up above the shower head look at her <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> Not an ounce of fat on that one. Jesus. All these stories somehow worse than this Georgia, Georgia camp where yeah. everyone got the virus. <laughs> right. And think about, I mean... So how many was it? 76% of 600? I'm not great at math. That's what? Around uh, f between four and 500? 450, I guess, to be exact. Those are going back to what? Let's say there's siblings. 300 households? Yeah. Right. That's crazy. Right. All right. All right. All right. What about you, about those bunkers? All right. I read this story that uh, 
it literally the the of course I clicked on it. The headline was why so many Americans are buying up personal bunkers. They're the self-proclaimed largest survival community on earth. It's near the South Dakota town of Egremont. Sales, the, the, I guess the, the bunker costs $35,000. Sales are up over 600% in the wake of the pandemic. The bunkers are both part of a complex. The bunkers, the, the bunkers are both part of a complex spanning 18 square miles. Uh, which is like three quarters the size of Manhattan, and it's connected by 100 miles of private road, and their neighbors include or will include the occupants of 574 additional private bunkers, and it's capable of accommodating 10,000 people. Damn. So I went on and looked online on this, and they're like, they're underground, and it's cement, and it's kind of like a semicircle, like it's an arched roof. And then they say they're sealed by concrete, and steel ballast uh, and a steel blast door entrance. Each shelter comes retrofitted with electrical wiring, internal power generation system, plumbing, all that stuff. And the walls are designed to withstand a 500,000 pound internal blast, which struck me. Yeah. Is that what a bunker <laughs> is really? Yeah. Is that the idea of a bunker, the internal blast? Yeah. I mean, I like if I'm a neighbor of some whack job in the next bunker. I like that if he blows himself up, it won't affect me. But isn't it supposed to withstand, like, getting bombed? Yeah, I guess they're protecting the, the pedestrians that are walking around on those 100 miles of private road. It sounds like a prison. But I do know that these bunkers were originally built to store arms that the uh, armed forces had. Yeah, that's what they were originally set up to start to to store missiles and stuff like that. So I guess the idea was if those blew up. You're right, right, right. Wow, just a, probably just another taxpayer, some bloated military project that they did it wrong, and so they just fucking left this billion dollar structure. Yeah. And then there was a there was a no bid contract made with a crony. Who turned them into condos? First of all, thirty-five grand for a place to live. I'll go there anyway. <laughs> you know? Yeah. How's you the got- view? Well, if you slide the metal hatch <laughs> on your front door, you get a view. <laughs> but otherwise, the, your yeah. jo- your five hundred thousand pound explosion is going to get out. It takes a certain kind of person that wants <clears throat> to survive so badly, they're willing to live in a windowless place filled with fucking lunatics. In South Dakota, the most boring state. Like, is that really surviving? Right. Are you still alive? Well, they're alive? the largest survival community, yeah. I'll, I'll take the radiation. I'll take the bomb. I'm done. Well, one guy said, uh, I'm just recalling it. I don't have the article in front of me. He was like, uh, no, he was like, oh, he's like, this is, I love living here. I've, I've had been here like three years. I just sometimes just go in. Shut that front door. I don't come out for a few days, and I've like kind of like learned much more about myself. <laughs> one of those. <laughs> what do you think you'd learn about yourself after three days in one of those? That I think I could blow something up big enough to blow my neighbor away <laughs> through my walls. <laughs> I'd be working on a project. Let's just say that. Yeah. She. I find out my my neighbor who loves Nickelback. Uh, somehow that noise gets through the wall. I'd probably really spiral and start creating all these bookmarks that said retirement filled with porn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm imagining when you become fully unhinged, that's the type of thing you do. <laughs> Let's go to international, Mike. All righty. Well. If you're waiting for your cocaine in Australia, you are shit out of luck. Oh, a, light af- a light aircraft overloaded with cocaine crashed on takeoff, uh, exposing a Melbourne-based crime syndicate and leading to the arrest of five men with alleged links to the Italian mafia. It was stuffed with more than 1,100 pounds of cocaine. Street value? Guess what the street value is? No idea. $57 million. Whoa! All on one plane. I got to say, with the COVID, I think they're getting really lax with the airport security these days. <laughs> I mean, mask? You got your mask? Okay. What? What? Oh, the big bag is... That's a lot of talcum powder, sir. All right. Just put that in 
Why do, you have a, why do you have a small hole in your mask right around your nose? What's that all about? <laughs> Can you please put on your mask? You have white stuff all over your face, sir. What? Uh, wait a minute. They lived. The plane blew up. There must have been cocaine everywhere. Holy shit. I think that it's such it's such a big story that they don't they literally didn't mention if anybody died in the story. I fucking read it. I read the whole thing. So No, it sounds like they got the five guys and it just says it crashed on takeoff, I guess. Yeah. Um wow, it went down on yeah, on liftoff. Huh. I did, I but, had no idea that the Aussies were doing so much blow. I always think of them as like mellow. Really? Oh, no worries, mate. No worries, mate. I don't know. You have a guy chasing fucking wildlife around until he gets stung by a stingray. Yeah, that's true. He's a croc hunter. We don't have croc hunters here. Yeah, that's true. I think that's a cocaine activity right there. Yeah, and a giant knife to do your lines off of. Yeah. Um, <laughs> to do your bumps. Giant bumps of cocaine <laughs> off a, of a knife. Um, now that's a bump spoon. I, uh, but, but it's so funny when I hear about these stories, I do think about how many, I know this is the wrong side of the issue to be on. I do think about how many people's dreams were pinned on this. $57 million in this one takeoff. Like, that is like, this is my last one. I'm out. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, anyone could say that, of course, with this amount, but it's like so many people. And then they get the call, like, yeah, it went down. Or they're getting a call, like, you know, from authorities. Yeah, there was a lot of bachelor parties in Australia that weekend where the where the guys had to actually have sincere conversations with each other. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. And it's that's, prom that's season. Fucking going down during prom season in Australia. Oh. <laughs> um this what is also an international story. A Dutch Holocaust survivor. This is where the Sunday Papers goes places other comedy news shows doesn't let's, go. Please, let's get back to the cocaine. A Dutch Holocaust survivor whose parents died at Auschwitz is demanding compensation from Germany, as well as from the country's rail network who transported Jews to Nazi concentration camps, often at their own cost. They would charge them. So uh, ne Nederlands Spoorwagen which is, I guess, their Amtrak, agreed to settle the case with 500 survivors and thousands of their direct descendants. Hold on. Well, let me get this straight. So this is a Dutch Holocaust survivor, and his parents died, but he survived? Yeah. That's weird. He must be really, really old. Yeah. Or she, I well, guess. Well, I think the oldest Holocaust survivors, you figure 1940, what was it, no, 45, 46 that the war yeah. ended? So that would put them at 85 years old. No, 75 years old. If you were zero, then you'd be 75. So if you were 10, you'd be 85 years old right now. Right. I wonder yeah, how he old. survived and his parents did it. But that's not the story. The story is he's demanding compensation also from the train. He wants a refund, which, <laughs> which seems like a pretty legit... <laughs> reason to ask for a refund i mean i once tried to get my money back from antrac because the bar car was closed <laughs> so, <laughs> sir sir uh so sorry but we we only take those claims until 70 years after your train ride <laughs> you just missed it we would have given your, you the full refund your train ride <laughs> it's like it's like do you have a receipt Excuse me, sir, do you have a receipt? Do you have the punch? When they come around and punch the tickets, <laughs> did they? No. <laughs> Wait a minute. God, my head's exploding. They made <laughs> they made Jews and gypsies and Poles and gays and or everyone who took trains. They charged them train fare to take them to Dachau and all the places? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How, how did that not get out till now? I know. That's, that's one of the most insane. sinister details, if I may say, of the whole Holocaust. Holy shit. I mean, what what pretense did they get them to buy the ticket? Did, they must have known where they were going, right? <laughs> yeah. Didn't they fight you? Wait a minute. There's all these scenes in movies and, I mean, and documents. They're fighting not to get on the train. Yeah. 
Right. I was there I, a gas bill? Am I allowed to ask that question? Oh, right now we got to move on. We got to no, move wait. on. Actually, by the way, I want to defend that. That is not. It's it's crazy. You're right, but I'm not to blame. This is the this is basically the same thing. Yeah. Ch- I mean, this would be the worst darkest joke ever to say that the Germans charged the passengers on the concentration camp trains, uh, air you know fare. Right. Like that that that's crazy. That's that's the same as saying they charged them. There was a gas bill. Like it's not and, really and, that and, different. And the really cruel part is they made them buy round trip tickets. So that's just a total waste. Maybe that's what the refund is about. Right. And that's how they got them on the train. It's a round hey, Guys, it's a round trip ticket. Yeah, yeah. we're just, just checking in. Yeah. Um, oh, my God. I, the only thing to do right now is to go to entertainment. Well, this is an even darker story. So, okay, everyone is asking us to talk about it. We can't talk about our experience. So Greg and I worked at the Ellen DeGeneres show. We won Greg, be- actually, between us. Yeah. I was there at the very beginning, the first couple of years. And between us, we've won, what, six Emmys for the show? That's if you have five. I only have one. Oh, I have four. All right. I got four. You got That's one. That's what I was getting at. So, but Greg, you were a big part of forming that show. You were on board before it launched. You were part of the launch. You identified. You helped to create the voice of that show. And you were kind of invaluable. And you were there. How long were you there total? Two years, and uh, I I didn't necessarily write she should dance, but I was part of the I was part of the conversation that she should dance. Right. Um, but she's doing a lot of dancing now. She is <clears throat> dancing now. There's a lot of the, and first of all, so we can only report the news on this because we both signed NDA agreements. So there's not a lot we can say from our own personal experience, but we can, of course, report to you, our listeners, in a responsible way, what has been already published by other news journals and websites. Well, it's ramped up this week to just from a toxic work atmosphere, which is very, very um, incredibly well known in Hollywood circles. And that's why a lot of people coming out. Now, did you see Brad Garrett came out? Yeah. And now someone else, an actress, I'm forgetting whom, Leah that Thompson. That girl from uh, Back to the Future. Uh, she came out and said Leah, Leah tr- Thompson. She was defending Brad Garrett, saying that what he's saying is absolutely true. What, and I think what they're saying is everybody in town, which has been reported this week, it's it's... It's not even a secret. It's so widespread. What an incredibly toxic work environment is there. All the reports, especially about Ed Glavin this week, like, uh, and just how how awful the experience was there. But the reports now have graduated just since last weekend to now widespread um, sexual offenses that have happened on the job. So that is going to move the needle for sure. Well, one... Uh, I mean, no. I I wasn't there for the debauchery. I don't know. It's shit went fucking crazy at Ellen. There were parties where the head writer was uh, trying to ask guys if he could blow them. And then the music producer was trying to get uh, one of the people that worked for him to suck his dick. And I just thought <laughs> there was an easy solution to this. <laughs> they didn't need to, <laughs> yeah they needed to go outside of the producer circle to get everything done everybody wanted no there was yes exactly but no in fairness it was like you know young people who had gotten their first job and um you know it's incredibly inappropriate uh, it's inappropriate and, and you know the head writer kevin lehman who was a writer's assistant when i was there um, he was talking, I guess there were complaints about, he would say to people, are you a top or a bottom? Talk about dicks and stuff. And so he defended himself by saying that, um, my, my job is head writers to come up with jokes. And during that process, we can occasionally push the envelope. I'm horrified that some of my attempts at humor may have caused offense. And it's true. The envelope was pushed so hard at Ellen. You know, oh boy, 
that was when you're when you're that edgy, of course shit's gonna get a little out of control. Yeah, they really have to find that line and walk it. When you're doing jokes about waiting in line at Starbucks while you're on Facebook and the funny things that pop up, I mean, you're naturally going to be talking about dicks and tops <laughs> and bottoms. Now, Lehman's comment also said, he went on to say, defend himself. I'm, I'm paraphrasing here. But he went on to defend himself saying that he's been there for 20, you know, whatever, 17 years or something. He started as a PA, writer's assistant. He's worked his way up, writer, head writer. He's, as far as he knows, there's not a single complaint in HR about him, which, by the way, he wouldn't know if there were some. But anyway, and he's, he can't imagine it. And then he turns on the, on the accusers saying that he can't believe someone would print such malicious was the word he used and misguided, I think, were the two words, um, state, statements, I guess. And what occurred to me was this was a male um, em former employee or employee, I guess, former employee saying this about Kevin. And it's really changed, I guess, you know, in females, it was it was believe women like you wouldn't. The wrong move was to call a woman, an innocent woman's accusations malicious. Like, they're not right. malicious, especially right. when you first hear them. I think there has to be an investigation and all that. And then, and you know, in other words, you, you vet it. You don't just naturally believe them, but certainly you don't ridicule them and you don't call them malicious. And I guess maybe that's not extended to men. <laughs> right. Right. And it's going to be a matter of time until you just believe everybody all the time. Um, but again, getting back to the edgy joke, when you're doing bits <laughs> about how loafers have no laces. And so sometimes when you're in a rush, you'll just slip. Them, like it's you're going down that path. Good luck putting the brakes on. Hey, Kevin, listen, we're thinking about doing a bit where, you know, you walk into a screen door because you forgot you closed it and you don't see it. So uh, can you can you ask everybody about their cocks? So also, I get bitten by mosquitoes, <laughs> and my friends don't. And so, uh, are you going to blow that guy to, so we can do some stuff on this? You know, sometimes if I'm at a hotel shower, those shampoo bottles. First of all, the lettering. I can't read the lettering. I don't have my glasses on. I'm in the shower. I can barely see my huge cock. Well, I'm sorry. How did that? How did that happen? <laughs> and the music producer. Hey, listen, we want to book uh, Sade. So um, can you uh, can you ask that guy if you can blow? <laughs> oh, my God. Allegedly. This is all, all allegedly. allegedly. All allegedly. All available on BuzzFeed uh, USA Today. We Page six. These all things we've read. None of this is information we would be breaking our NDA to reveal. Although one, NDA, one of the by things the way, is a non-disclosure agreement for those. Hopefully, I so envy you if you don't know what those initials mean because uh, it's not in your everyday life. One by the of way, the I don't what, recall signing one. Um, I think it was in your original contract when you started working there. I'm going to look it up because I'd love to talk about that. Place. Oh, I know, I know it exists because I have been called on it. You got it. Are you? I don't. Are we allowed to say, yeah, well, you got to cease and desist. Yeah, I said something on the Howard Stern show, and I got to cease and desist. But, um, <laughs> no, I don't think I officially got it. I got warned that I would get one. Or, I don't know, maybe I did. But one of the complaints that also really got now, the Also now, doesn't it look pretty bad if they're enforcing people? Because, you know, everyone is still terrified about retribution. Yes. And they, and that's in all these articles also. That's all why these everybody's say, anonymous. Everybody's everyone's anonymous. anonymous. And they're really terrified and they're certain that they will start looking up and pressuring journalists to give up their sources. Yeah. Well, uh, one of the stories that originally put this thing on the map was that there was a female staffer who was black. It's black again, by the way. Did you know Did you know that? It's no longer African-American? I think, yeah. But yeah. We, we, we were corrected that, <laughs> I guess I said blacks. But I don't say blacks like, you know, 
uh, gays. Like, I'm not saying it that way. I think I was like whites, blacks. Like, I think whatever. Go ahead. I'm just digging myself a deeper hole. So, Go ahead about the black. Go ahead about the black. So there was a black woman who said that she was uh, it was a microaggression that she got confused with another black girl who had a similar hairstyle, uh, which I don't believe is true because I don't remember there being a second black employee <laughs> when I was there. <laughs> it also could get confusing when the head writer's in blackface, just as, you know, for shits and giggles and trying to find that line to push it. Well, because he was doing a bit that day about crows. They will they will yeah. start croaking at five o'clock in the morning. Why the branch outside my window? Isn't it always that branch? <laughs> Did you see my black face? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Mr. Head Writer, whoever it is, I'm not I'm not singling out the one in the articles, but over time there were many head writers and uh all right, I get your bit about how hard it is to get the fourth <laughs> corner on Tupperware. To seal, I don't know why you're doing it in blackface and a black penis that you prosthetic that you have hanging out of your pants. It seems I got it. Tupperware is tough. I think we nailed that. I don't understand. Is there a? Is it just that all? Tupperware uh, lives matter. I'm trying my <laughs> hardest to relate it to what you're doing here. All right, so we've so we've got Charday booked, but <laughs> I just wanted to tell you guys about the time Charday was playing, and I was the top. I was the top. Were you? Are you ever a bottom? You've been a bottom, right? <laughs> oh my god. Oh. all right. And we better get way, off this. We're gonna get sued, Mike. This is the only the first wave, which yeah. is two days old. Of oh. these articles about the sexual harassment uh, and inappropriate yeah. sexual comments. So as all these things happen, <clears throat> so many more people are going to come out of the woodwork. Yeah. And uh, who knows what they're going to talk about. But we will keep you abreast. Not because we have inside information as employees. No. That would be a violation. But as reporters of the news, people that peruse websites and read newspapers, we will give you that information. I remember I was no longer there, so I can talk about this because I just know it from uh, from the public information that she had a a very emotional breakdown. Ellen did on camera talking about one of her dogs that she adopted and then she violated the adoption agency's agreement and gave it to her hairdresser. And in there, there were reports of actually how often that happened. Um and I can't say more about that, but uh, in the article then, she had a breakdown and then couldn't perform and couldn't do her shows. And I think they went dark and put up repeats and missed th three shows, four. I forget how many they missed. The writer's strike happens. She missed one show. The show went back and... I remember them in articles talking about how, in a way, it's kind of a blessing. That might be my word, but that they have found new ways and that the creating of material has actually gone better, saying all this while the writers were out on the picket line. And, you know, in my opinion, I was not there. I have no inside information. But I'm sorry. Writing doesn't necessarily mean, oh, where is the page with the printed if you are creating material, she continued to do sort of quasi monologues from this chair. That's writing. And, you know, and I know that because eventually I came back with a show and we really honored it and talked to the Writers Guild because it was Spike Ferriston and me about what we couldn't, could and couldn't do. Because things that writers, like for instance, documentaries this is a good example. Documentaries can win a best writing award by the WGA because figuring out how to tell the story of a of a true story with interviews, they consider writing because you are piecing together a story, even though you haven't created this character and it's really just how you lay it out on an, you know, on an edit timeline. So anyway, um, how is she going to, do you think she's coming back? I guess that was a long-winded way of getting to, does she do shows with this going on? Can she dance again, Mike? 
Can Ellen <laughs> dance again? That's what we're all wondering right now. Because yeah. I know at around 11 o'clock in the morning, I've gotten up, I've had a couple of cups of coffee, <laughs> and uh, I'm down. I'm thinking about my career. I'm thinking about COVID. But when that young lady with that cute little Dutch boy haircut gets up there and she dances to some R&B, and I see the joy on her face, knowing that it is her favorite part of the day. There's nothing she enjoys more yeah. than see, dancing day after uh, day for Housewives. See, I'm so different from you. What happens is I wake up just in time. I set my alarm at 11, and then I am looking for something that challenges me <laughs> and where people have really pushed the envelope and found that line <laughs> by talking about blowing their coworkers allegedly <laughs> and asking them <laughs> if they could grab their dicks allegedly but also in the articles <laughs> and i want to see what that that vetting that hard work i want to see what that's produced that's and right. usually it's a very energetic dance it's a, yeah you can see she's the dance tells you how good the show's going to be. And there's days where it reaches a fever pitch, almost like an African rain dance. And you know the, the rain is the jokes, and they're about to fucking fall. <laughs> they are coming. They're going to be coming hard and fast. Yeah. The old missed my exit because I was, uh, whatever, punchlines. Yeah. Uh, speaking of hard and fast, let's go to some sports. I was, that was a hard and fast transition. I could talk about that stuff. I'm not, sorry, legally, I can't talk about that stuff all day long. Sports, MLB commissioner reached out Friday. Whoa, hold on, let me find. Uh, I think I have this article, but do you hear? So sports, I don't know, man. I don't know how sports is going to go. It's, um, what do you think? The MLB, let me find this story, sorry. Well, I watched an MLB game the other night. And, uh, you know, it was, the, it was the Astros against the Dodgers, which, of course, was the matchup from the World Series where the Astros cheated. So there right. was a lot of animosity on the field. And uh, I forget the pitcher's name, but he threw a fucking 96-mile-an-hour fastball I at the head of this. the batter. And there was a bench-clearing brawl, which is definitely not honoring six feet of distance. They, <laughs> they were fucking rolling around on the field. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, all right, let me... Anyway, MLB commissioner reached out Friday to urge that a redoubling of efforts to adhere to COVID-19 safety and health protocols is necessary or shutting down the season could become a strong possibility. 20% of the teams were not playing on Friday for COVID-19-related reasons just a week after the regular season began. MLB players um, said the latest batch of test results on Friday... They got the results, and there were 29 positives, and the Marlins were responsible for 21. Oh, my God. And the MLB has not released a reason why it believes the Marlins suffered this kind of infestation. Let me, I have one guess. Are the Marlins in Florida? <laughs> you fucking morons. <laughs> Is that it? Or is that like you know? I know scientific uh, scientists always think of: is it causal? Is there a correlation? Uh, I don't know. Why don't you just look at Florida and Florida's team? Yeah, there's certain stats that kind of fall in line. Like uh, they did a survey of how many of the players' sons were fucking their high school teachers. Very high number. <laughs> <laughs> well, all of this. I can't believe that roommate cutting off his uh, his roommate's head, the landlord, wasn't in Florida. Yeah, right, right. Florida man. Florida greatest man. Fucking, greatest fucking website out there. Florida and with man. With sports, now it's going to be Florida men. Florida men can't play ball. And by the way, one of the most highly anticipated returns in sports is Florida. You know, we got uh, Tampa Bay. Oh, right, with Tom, Tom Brady and um, Gronkowski. Yep. So, who knows, man? And now the NBA is not also to mention, Mike. Our this this fucking show has our first sponsor, and it's a betting site that is contingent on the NFL happening this year. We've he got a we got a four a week T, contract, not D. Yes. Yeah. Um. 
I know. When would those start if we were to do those? I think like beginning of September. And, you know, it's like, here's another great idea. All right, listen, we're going to really, really, really protect and do the safest thing possible with the NBA. So um, let's have all the games in Florida. <laughs> oh, is that what they're doing? Isn't it all in Orlando and they're oh. like Biodome or whatever the oh, hell they're right, calling right, it? Right, right, right. Yeah. Jesus. I'm not even pretending to follow sports anymore. No, I watched that baseball game just because I knew something was going to happen with those two teams. And, uh, and of course, like, they're not wearing masks. Well, the only guy wearing a mask is the catcher, and that's a fucking shitty mask for COVID. <laughs> <laughs> they're all spitting nonstop, as yeah. baseball players do. Right. All they're doing is spitting, whether it's sunflower seeds, tobacco, or just their nervous ticks. And then they're yeah, and then the first baseman's got a he's got a chit chat with the runner. There's always that little conversation. I love to know what that conversation is. You yeah. know, what are those two rocket scientists chatting about? Probably Ellen. Hey man, what's <laughs> thing what's the deal with Tupperware? You ever you ever wonder about that? Why is that fourth corner so hard to get down? <laughs> you know, it's not a force at second, so the guy's gonna have to touch you and get the virus. <laughs> So you might you could try to steal. I, I don't think he wants to touch you. He said that before the game. Well, that's what they should do is they should make it. There's no touching. You just throw the ball at the guy. That right. will get ratings through the roof. Imagine changing should. that rule. That could, They could do that. You fucking hit the guy with the ball. I love it. Even up first, a bunt, you just pick that thing up and <laughs> right in the small of his back. <laughs> That's what the that's the big obstacle when they're trying to throw up the first baseline anyway. You know, yeah. like the first baseman has to step to the side. Right, right. I like uh, that a lot, Mike. We got to keep moving here because you right. know the su Sunday papers are a little shorter than they used to be. Science. Uh, global admissions of methane have reached their highest levels on record, and. Uh, they're saying that this is going to cost. This is going to cause worldwide wildfires, droughts, floods, famines. All and, that's happening. Well, my whole thing is because I read bumper stickers, <laughs> is that you have to think globally, but act locally huh. to cut down on the methane. So I have gone off dairy completely uh, because things were getting bad in my house. We had a there was a toaster fire, uh, the bathroom flooded. Yeah. And I went to bed last night. I was fucking famished, like 3 a.m., famished. <laughs> you also have a bidet that doesn't work so hot, so this will, this will help that too. You know, I'm not saving any paper with the bidet. I use <laughs> three times as much paper drying. I blast my, my ass. Then I got to wipe my balls, my inner thigh, my taint. It's <laughs> like so The amount of laundry I'm doing, just drying the towels. Well, that's what I need to do. That's what people say you're supposed to do is have a towel. That doesn't sound a towel that's going to be catching fecal matter. No, no. I don't know. Maybe just use the hose in the yard. Or you how about this? At the same time, how about you take it's a shower? A win, win, win. How about you take a shower once a day? Yeah, that's also, that's a big one. Another story about sperm. We and did again. A, we did. We did a story. I guess Alan's story might have covered sperm. I meant another story. This one's about sperm. There we go. More than three hundred years after Antoni van Lurek used the the earliest microscopes to describe human sperm as having a tail, which, when swimming, lashes with a snake-like movement. But now, using state-of-the-art three D microscopy and a camera capable of recording. Over 55,000 frames a second. They were able to see the sperm from, uh, in 3D. And uh, they say that it actually, it swims on its side. And because it swims on its, uh, no. It, like with an attitude? Kind of like, look at me. <laughs> guess where I'm going. <laughs> Anybody want some eggs? And uh, they, they only one side swims. And so instead of going in circles, it it turns around constantly like a corkscrew. Ah, and they say it, it, but they they're all doing it at the same time, like synchronized. They say it's like synchronized spinning. 
Huh. Yeah. So it's it's really you really are drilling her like or him. That's right. It's it's a real drill movement. This thing is rotating around going forward. That's right. And that's why um like my belly button, it's like a pool with synchronized <laughs> swimmers in it. I'm going to get little I'm going to get little cards and give scores like at the all, Olympics. All these little I think some <laughs> torpedoes also do that to be and oh and bullets. All right. Do you know bullets, the inside of, I think, a lot of, I think I know what I'm talking about, the inside of a lot of rifles, it's it's whatever you would call it, it's graded like a screw so that the bullet comes out spinning. Yeah. And improves a lot of- accu- Improves accuracy. And, you know, I'm sure a lot of women are not going to believe this, and so you're going to have to just say, honey, here, let me, let me get it close so you can see it. Now, we are seeing- galaxies millions millions of light miles away we're just now being able to check out the sperm that seems crazy well i think what it is is when they get the sperm to study it they're getting it from the uh from the scientists in the lab and so once they once they're giving the sperm they get really tired and apparently they're not following up on the study they're just taking a nap in the laboratory. Okay. Two sperm stories from me. Uh, good luck trying to change it now. Stop doing your push-ups, I bet, uh, with that opening introductory phrase. So we, when I was married, we were having a lot of difficulty uh, getting pregnant. And um, <clears throat> it was, you know, listen, God bless people who, who have much harder trouble than this. But we were at like over a year, year and a half, and we were looking into it. So one thing is they want to check me. So I go to a place in Santa Monica and I go in and the woman's there. And, you know, there's, of course, all the hot nurse, uh, you know, sort of jokes, easy jokes to make and all that stuff. I won't do any of those. But she gives me the little a receptacle, labeled it just like a urine sample, and you can go in that room. And then she tells me there's videos, there's a, a DVD player, and then there's uh, magazines as well if you want. So I go in there and I'm such an idiot. So, of course... I start getting finicky, <laughs> kind of like we do at home. Like, nah, I'm bored with that one. Nah, let me <laughs> check out this one. So I start doing that stuff. So then I go through their DVD collection, and I find gay porn. And I take a seat on the couch in there, which I, I regret doing for other reasons. And I'm just like, oh, no way. And I literally, this is how dumb I am. I'm like, this is the... And the doctors are in on this? There's gay guys married to women trying to have a baby? They should stop that now. Like they, and meanwhile, this is, I'm supposed to have an erection, and this is what I'm thinking about. I'm like, wait a minute. Like I have to go out there and tell them, like, you can't facilitate this. These gay guys, God bless them. they got to be honest. Right. Their, their woman doesn't know that this is what they need. Maybe they're not even having intercourse. That's why they're in here. Right. So, of course, it's for homosexual people who are, you know, finding a surrogate and all yeah. of that stuff. So, uh, so there was that. The other thing was, it's like, bef- it's like, how are you going to have a baby? You're the head writer of the Ellen DeGeneres. Show. You yeah. don't have time to properly father a child. And what I like was like, <laughs> listen, I did use those DVDs, but I'm exceptional. Like I can muscle through, <laughs> but you shouldn't have those in there. So anyway, imagine uh, if you jerked off to those DVDs and then you had a you had a son and he was gay. <laughs> Do you think it works like way, that? Oh my god, that's funny. By the way, <laughs> depending on what you masturbate to. By the way, maybe they swim differently too. They're really like a lot more like you know. <laughs> They're flamboyant. really good at it. Yeah. Yeah, like those Esther Williams uh, yeah. old uh, choreographed things. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. By the way, under the microscope, they see the sperm swimming, like with the big circles, putting one hand in the middle. Yeah, <laughs> that's what they found. So, oh god, is this this couldn't get more inappropriate? By the way, I did try all the usual jokes, like you know, and nothing, nothing from the nurse. Like you know, she gives me a thing. I'm like, well, this should probably take uh, thirty or forty seconds. Nothing. I also, I also was like, um, uh. She's like, there's videos and there's magazines and all this. I'm like, no, thank you. All I need is a picture of my wife. (laughs) Nothing. (laughs) Nothing back. Which, of course, is the biggest joke ever, like from any guy going in there. Like, that's that's not that's not the that's not what they hide under a retirement 
uh, tabs on their computer <laughs> is picnics with the wife. So okay. on the before I went there, like you have two options. You can come in here and produce your sample here, or you can come pick up the little container, speaking of Tupperware, and you can do it at home. And I'm like, all right, seems like easier to do it at home. I'm like, okay, but at home, there are a couple of rules. One, you have to get here within, you had to like go there right away. And they recommend that you keep the sample under your armpit as you drive there because keeping it warm or at the temperature it is, your body temperature is, they, they live longer. And it's a more accurate read, which is what they're trying to get. And, of course, I immediately start writing my Curb Your Enthusiasm episode, spec script, where he gets in an accident with a guy who's trying to drive with sperm under his arm. <laughs> <laughs> like, of course. And then I thought, yeah. how many people driving around cities every every single day there's someone driving with sperm under their arm? Yep. And, and, ha and handing in a... A sperm sample that smells like fucking body odor. <laughs> <laughs> Here you go. That one took a lot of work. Um, all right. So uh, should we do a little Dear Amy? Dear Amy, let's do it. Where are you? Boy, I'm not organized. That Ellen thing threw me. Okay, here we go. Dear Amy. Mm, my 18-year-old son started college this year. He has a part-time job and is paying for a new car to drive to school 30 miles from home. He lives at home but makes bad choices by smoking pot! Exclamation point. I have asked him to stop many times, but he chooses to continue to smoke. I need advice as to what to do or how to stop the rage that blows up when he does this in my house. I know if I kick him out and take the car away, he will drop everything he's been working for. Disgusted dad. <laughs> wow. It sounds like your son's biggest problem is his disgusted dad. Yeah. But th that opening paragraph, you got a model son. If he's that's smoking right. pot, that's working. I, I, I hate to answer this seriously, but honestly, what's your problem? No, I mean, pot is, I, if, I, if I have a choice of my kid either drinking a lot or smoking pot, I'm going with pot. He's, if he's driving 30 miles a day, he's not drunk driving. Especially if he's going to college, has a part-time job, Man. and I'm not even helping him pay for his fucking car, so he's paying for a new car. Right. I'd say, Are you serious? I'd say also, disgusted dad needs a couple bong hits, in my opinion. And what's the rage that blows up? Is he referring, he has to be referring to himself. Yeah, I need advice rage. as to what to do or how to stop the rage that blows up when he does it. I don't think your stoned model citizen son is raging. I think it's you. Yes, yes. Well, Amy, uh, you know, we should actually read Amy's responses too after our responses. We could, but I don't know. Or at we least could, the gist of it. We can at least say the gist of what you would say. This is what's happening next week. I'm going to read you an Ask Amy or whatever, and you are going to predict Amy's response. All right, I like that. That's good. Perfect. Well, I'm going to ask you because I, I've never read her column. You sound more familiar with it than I am. Well, I think you could predict Amy's advice. I don't think Amy's a medical doctor or psychiatrist. Yeah, but is she young? Is she old? Is she conservative? I think Amy, they tell us she's on that Sunday NPR show, like, wait, wait, don't tell me or whatever uh, the hell okay. it is. So I think she, Amy's probably a little younger than we are, but middle-aged. I, I love that somebody's younger than us and is middle-aged. That's a don't even bummer. Get me, don't even get me Ugh. started. Oh, what did I look up recently where I thought I Retirement? got excited? Oh, no, I did the census. Yeah. And the census had me put in my age. And I put in everything right, and they, go, they popped up uh, a year younger than me. And I literally, like, I, I honestly got my hopes up. It wasn't yeah. that I was flattered. I was like, holy shit, yeah, maybe I am still that age. And it wasn't because the census took my math and then figured out how old I was in January of 20, like, you know, six months ago. Yeah, right. But I literally could be full. Like, I was so wanting to be younger that I, I was honestly like, because you lose, I quote, it's like it's signing the wrong date on checks. I think I'm the, a year younger for four months into my new year. Oh, I don't remember. And also I think about, I don't care anymore because 
what the difference between me now at 54 versus when I was 53. Oh, like I, when I have to, if you put a gun to my head and said, what did you do new or learn new during your 53rd year versus like your fourth year where you're learning gross motor skills and you're learning language and you're learning fucking sports and reading. And, and I, at 53, I, I don't know. I learned how to use Instagram stories. I think that I think that's all I did that year. I learned no matter what, I have to put my car key by the front door, or I am I am not getting out the door the next day. I did learn that <laughs> in this last year. I learned that that third cup of coffee after two thirty, and I am up all night. <laughs> <laughs> well, we both learned you gotta really push the envelope to write Tupperware jokes. We both I mean, you burp week. it. When you say burp it, is it rude? Should your Tupperware say excuse me afterwards? Because I know when I ask a guy to blow me at a cast party, <laughs> I never excuse myself. Too edgy? No, I mean, if you stick to the Tupperware stuff, I think you found that line. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> Let's do some mail. You guys send us mail. All we right. read it. We respond to it. Uh, every single person we respond to, fitsdogradio at gmail.com. Feel free to reach out. Correct us. Write us a song. Oh, and our logo, our logo this week, which is kind of a classy old school one from yeah. David Hughes, whose design went for us before, uh, set that up. You can design us a nice, simple graphic. We do a different one every week, different song, Very different cool. graphics. So send those in. Um, this comes from Stephen McQuillan. Uh, hi, Greg. Really quick here. Mike Gibbons looks and sounds like Bill Nye, the science guy, after a month of binge drinking. How Mike? dare he? Your thoughts? Well, so who did the month of binge drinking, Bill or me? Bill did. To Bill's get to my skinny. level. He's I very skinny. It. Yeah. No, he's like, he's he's becoming a hero. He did this viral thing recently. Um, yeah, sure. I'll take that. That, I, I'm going to consider that a compliment. All right. First of all, who wouldn't want to party with Bill Nye or be with him after he's partied even? I think he'll, it'll be mind-expanding for that guy who he's already actually, has an incredibly he's, expanded mind. He's a fun guy. He was on my podcast once, and it was, oh, like my, nice. it was like my second highest rated podcast of my whole life. Wow. You know what he kind of is a little bit? He's a little bit like today's Mr. Rogers. Yes, I bet if he swung into some positive territory, like just talking about, I don't know what Bill Nye, I mean, does Bill Nye ever talk about things that involve mental health, like how positive thoughts can change your physiology or something? But I bet if he started doing that, we need a hero. That's basically what I'm trying to say. Well, we have Ellen. We do have Ellen, and we have we have the guy from uh, Mucho Mucho Amor, oh, who is inspiring. Yeah. Walter, what was his name? It was Walter. Walter, Latin last name. Um, this I is should from, know it. Uh, this is Mercado. From, yeah, that's right. Next one is, uh, I, I seem to have a crush on you, too. That's nice. From Joan. Joan. Wow, wait. Joanne. This is the second letter? Normally, it's the first. Or is that a correct? No, it's the second letter. Uh, it's the second time. I thought I'd kind of sneak it in this time so people didn't catch on. Oh, okay. Well, it always... Always nice to hear. It's nice to hear. Yeah. And I tend to forget forget we get letters like that every week. I um, Last week I mentioned that I had... I have depression and I try everything. And uh, a friend gave me a microdose of mushrooms to try out, which I did. And I had pretty good luck with it. And then uh, we solicited you guys to send us your stories of uh your craziest tripping story so this is a good one this comes from anonymous they said please don't use my name well so, you just blew that david mandel says during college <laughs> friends and i dosed ourselves with shrooms two of us decided we needed to go on a beer run in the middle of the trip obviously shouldn't have been driving we took my friend's late 90s jeep cherokee to the local convenience store my friend couldn't deal with the public and remained in the car while I went to buy the beer. Apparently, four younger, larger black guys 
parked <laughs> next to the Jeep while I was inside. Is that they, what they saw, or is, or did they really appear? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> they started dancing. Uh, so they, they got out of the car. As they exited the car, my buddy hit the all lock button. <laughs> if you remember locking all the doors, especially in older Cherokees, it was pretty audible inside, outside of the car. Oh. All the black guys heard it, surrounded the Jeep, and proceeded to yell and question his locking oh of my the God. car. And the guy's already freaking out. This is without oh, the black guys. Of course, he probably locked the door, not even seeing them, but regardless. I, I I obliviously walked out with the beer and immediately noticed that the car was surrounded by these guys yelling and banging on the windows and could see my buddy sitting in there with his head in his hands. I turned around <laughs> and went back inside. <laughs> Wondering what the fuck was going on, made a fake bathroom trip to the weird closet bathroom. The guy, the black guys finally came inside. I proceeded to run to the car and get out of there. Always leave a man behind. Yeah, right. Well, look, even oh under, my God. under best circumstances, is that a situation you're going to walk into? But on mushrooms, there's no fucking way you're walking out there. No, because if you're not on mushrooms, but he is, you would walk up, I think, and explain that. Because you also have to be under the impression they're about to kick his ass. Yeah. And so you have to be like, he's, he's, you have to understand he's disabled right now, basically. Yeah. Um, but, <laughs> oh my God, that is a nightmare. <laughs> I want to hear how the rest of the trip went. This is from uh, Jonelle from Montreal, who let us use her name. One of the first times I got too high was in college with my best friend and roommate at the time. All right, this is smoking pot. Immediately after we smoked the joint, her long-distance boyfriend called to break up with her, and all we could do was laugh. We were trying to figure out what was so funny as we gasped for air and failed to string two words together. When her high dissipated, it was the beginning of two very long weeks of her moping around, ordering pizza, watching rom-coms, and listening to James Blunt on a loop. Sounds Love like she was sh- still baked. Love the show, and I seem to have a crush on both of you. <gasps> Joan L. from Montreal. Look at that. Someone Je with uh, Im- impaired judgment who does drugs uh, has a crush right. on us. Um, that's funny. Yeah, that don't answer. You won't answer that phone once you got high. Yeah, I have... Uh, the worst time that happened to me, the ill-timed high, the worst time it happened to me was uh, three and a half years ago. It was uh, November 3rd, whatever the election is. And I'm on stage at the comedy store for election night. And it's uh, and Joe Rogan has pulled together a panel of people to do a live podcast of the election. So it's Rogan, Kreischer, Segura, Bill Burr, um, I forget. Was so, oh, uh, Doug Stanhope. It was a crazy lineup. Yeah. And so everybody's, we're fucking dying. Like, we're all laughing at each other. We're having a blast. The results are coming in. Everybody's getting getting ready for the, you know, the, the you know preordained new president, Hillary Clinton. And then all of a sudden, we started to see the numbers coming in, and it was Trump. And uh, I was not a Trump supporter. I'm not a mm-hmm. Trump supporter. Not at and that time, was, right? Maybe my worst nightmare, and I'm high on stage in front of 400 people with these guys that are joking about. Like none of them was taking it in; they were just kept making jokes about it. And I got up, I walked off stage, and I drove home, and I couldn't go in the house. Oh, I forgot to mention this: the the best part is first they announced that the referendum to make uh, pot legal in California had passed, so the entire crowd lit up a joint. And it was a hot box. It was a complete hot box. And Stan Hope handed me a joint, and I took a hit. I was so fucking high that the whole thing was just swirling around me. And when the Trump thing happened, I I freaked, and I just left. And I I drove home pretty high, shouldn't have driven. And I sat in front of my house. I couldn't go in because I couldn't face what was going on in that house. And I just sat out there listening to the radio for like an hour. Yeah, I've been high in a car, uh, not going into the place I <clears throat> I drove to. That's happened before. Yeah, for sure. Oh, these are good stories. You know, I, last week I told that story about the shrooms. I left out one detail. Yeah, which was it's it's when you start uh, a trip, and 
you, you know, they, 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 like the guy in the book says, it's about set and setting. So right. like, how are you feeling? You know, how, like what mood or what headspace are you in? And then also where are you like physically and all that stuff. So what happened was, of course it went crazy when we went to the restaurant and the kid was being potty trained because I was so out of my mind on shrooms because I had taken twice the amount. But what happened was when my stepbrother threw me the bag and I ate the bag and then he goes, stop, wait, spit that out. And I was like on the last stem. That's when the friends walked in and they were supposed to get the bag and we were, so they were livid. Uh, they were furious because yeah. we ate all the mushrooms because I ate both of their mushrooms yeah. and Jeff ate both of ours. So it began with like this resentful, seething. Bad energy. Uh, night. Oh, it was awful. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's too bad you couldn't have flipped on an episode of Ellen. Just change the fucking energy immediately. No, no, no. Sometimes it's too edgy for me. Uh, speaking of edgy, time mushrooms. for the obituaries. And that's all, folks. Herman Cain, uh, we lost him. He was the uh, t- he's the uh, TV and radio host, former business executive, and 2012 Republican presidential candidate. He died about a month after he became sick with the with the coronavirus. Uh, he was 74, and he wrote on a tweet uh, just before that. That uh, he wrote in June that people who wouldn't wear masks were fed up. He was very anti-mask. He attended he attended Trump's June twentieth rally in in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Yep. With no masks, I don't think anybody there was wearing a mask, and they think that's where he caught it. Who? Well, very sad. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of irony there, of course, but it's too bad. It's just, uh, I know his daughter, he's, uh, his, oh, no, no, sorry, I'm confusing it with another anti-masker in Georgia hmm. whose daughter, he now has the virus, and his, da- his, his daughter is pointing out that, like, you know, we just hope he gets better and everything, but please let this be a lesson. Yeah. Kind of like, don't listen to my father. Please wear masks. Yeah, I don't want anybody dying because of this and and looking at it and going, see, see, but it is, you know, look, this is this is what can happen. And uh, I just don't get what's so fucking hard about it. What is so difficult about putting a mask on when you're around people? If we all do it, this fucking thing will go away. We have whatever, whatever. I don't want to get into it. More confusing. It's principle. And they're not believing what you're saying. So it's principle. But then it's like, okay, but if it's principle, can you maybe get over that? Okay, they're wrong. But how about just following the law or rule? Don't call it an unjust law. And just hopefully it'll be temporary. Yeah. And, if, and if the other side is right, you'll be wearing a mask. There'll be a mask conversation will be shorter if they're right in terms of it, it, it likes helping the spread. Yeah. All right, Mike, the only thing we can do after obituaries is to cheer it up with a little... What do you got, comics? No, Ellen DeGeneres. We're going to play a whole episode right now. Comics, baby. Sunday funnies. Here we go. <laughs> uh, we'll start it off this week. Why not start with a little uh, Hagger the Horrible? I love it. Uh, first frame is uh, I haven't Helga. seen it, but I feel like it's Christmas morning. Go ahead. I'm going to close my eyes and envision this. Go for it. Okay. You look like Bill Nye with his eyes closed. Hmm. Um, it's Helga, the wife, and she is uh, talking to her daughter who's, who's sitting down and smiling. And she's a little hottie. The daughter's a little hottie. <laughs> and uh, Helga says, we women can do anything a man can do. Second frame. Helga talking to her daughter, who's now not smiling. She says, don't let your father know I told you that. <laughs> right. So they build up any woman, any young woman who's reading the comics, which is a lot of them. They're young. They're impressionable. They're looking for life lessons. Is told in the first frame that they can do anything. And in the second frame, I didn't mean what I said in the first frame. <laughs> also, I'm terrified. Of the abuser in the household. <clears throat> um, I don't know, though. I don't think women can rape and pillage as well as men, especially with a clear conscience. 
It's true. Back then, equality was really uh, it. Di- it didn't make sense. There, it was more physical. Yeah, was a, it was a more physical time. If you could steal, because you were bigger, you could steal. That's what went on then. All right, let's get to the Lockhorns. You know I love them. It's right. uh, Leroy is sitting in the driver's seat, and his wife. Why well, always forget his uh, Lorene, Lauren, uh, whatever her name is. She's on the cell phone. She's looking at him, and she says, "It's Siri. She wants to know where we are." <laughs> <laughs> That's not bad. That's fucking funny. Now, I don't read these ironically. I fucking love the Lockhorns. Yeah. Uh, whoever writes it, what's his name? Um, Greener? Something Greener. Joe's Joe Greener. Uh, second one. It's uh, Leroy is sitting at the table. And wh- when he's around people, he's incorrigible. He doesn't care <laughs> what the ramifications of what he says will be later. Okay. He doesn't picture going to bed with his wife and having to be accountable for what he said in front of people at her expense. She brings in this fucking turkey that she's worked really hard on, or it's a chicken, whatever. There's three people at the <laughs> table, and Leroy's got a big smile on his face. He kind of looks like he's got a little buzz on, and he goes, I'll get Loretta's carving set, three chisels and a mallet. And she's just beaming at him. You motherfucker. I kind of like it. <laughs> a little lighter. He didn't hit her. I mean, that's the thing about the Lockhorns. There's no physical violence, which is really refreshing on the Sunday papers. Remember uh, Rocky with um, Pauly? You want your fucking Thanksgiving turkey? He throws it in the alley. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. After she cooked it? Yeah. <laughs> what a great character that was. Holy shit. Oh, my shit. God. Uh, this is your favorite, a little far side. It's a uh, it's a kid standing against a tree. He's got an enormous head. It's it's not proportioned to his body, with a little apple on top of his head. The father is standing a few feet away with a uh, bow and arrow, and the kid <laughs> Wait, says, "Come on, Dad, shoot the, shoot the apple! Shoot the apple! Shoot the apple!" And the father says, "I'm hesitating. telling you, yeah." Unknown is... to most historians, William Tell had an older and less fortunate son named Warren. So you don't even need the caption. No, you don't. It, it is so good. Uh, you got a family circus for us? I do. If, I mean, there's so many. I mean, they're, they're, and they're all like dark like that. I'm, I'm now looking for one based on kind of in the same mode. But no, but there's just like, well, he would do the Adams Family before it became moving pictures. Right. And before they made the sitcom, and then here's little Pugsley in his room, and he has, in his bedroom, he's standing on his bed, and he's hammering up signs, like a lot of teenage boys will do. They, like, took signs, like a stop sign, stuff and put up, but all his signs are, no diving, pool empty, high, <laughs> keep clear, high voltage, <laughs> stop, await signal, blasting ahead. <laughs> Blind great spring condemned dangerous uh, under under <laughs> dangerous undertow. Um, stop bridge out. So these are all the signs he's collecting. Ah, that's hilarious. Yeah, I like that. Did I did I? Oh, I gotta show you the one. We have a New Yorker daily calendar. You know, with a little with a little cartoon yeah, every yeah. day from the day, from the uh, New Yorker. This one fucking kills me. It's a guy standing on the beach. He's got a cell phone to his head and his finger is covering his e- his other ear. And he goes, I'm sorry, I can barely hear you with the goddamn ocean behind me. <laughs> <laughs> and I I remember um, there's kind of lots of, I like that. There's lots of jokes, uh, old jokes that were like, and I don't know who's made them or whatever, but it might have even been in a movie. But it's like a kid picks up the shell you know, at the beach to listen to see if you can really hear the ocean. It's like, mommy, mommy, I can hear the ocean. Like, well, you're fucking standing in it. (laughs) Uh, Family circus can take two seconds. I'm not even going to comment. It's literally the kid, the fucking kid's there standing over his dog. His dog just finished the bowl, has dog food on its face, and the kid goes, Barfy, you should always brush your nose after eating. We do not have to spend time on that. We don't have to do anything about it. Nothing. Just let, we don't have to let it sit there. Let's just move on. 
Blondie. Oh, yes. do I love her? I love her. I honestly, and I'm not, I'm not making this up. I don't even tell my wife that I read Blondie. It's almost like my retirement tab on my internet. Yeah. Like, like sometimes people will write me a, 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 on Twitter about Blondie, or they'll, they'll still. Sometimes people put porn, which I don't like. They do like a naked Blondie getting fucked or something by Beetle Bailey, mm-hmm. and I don't, I don't appreciate that. Oh, it's degrading. Okay. Yeah, and my wife will wonder why people are sending me stuff about blonde, and I don't tell her, and I feel like I'm cheating on her. She only dimension. knows about your foot fetish and that type of stuff. She has no idea. <laughs> so, Dagwood's coming home. He's got his briefcase and his jacket. He's got a scowl on his face, and he says, "I'm in such a rotten mood, I could spit nails." Walks in the door, and Blondie, who's got on a pink chiffon. Uh, shirt, black skirt, high above her fucking sumptuous calves, and she's on her tiptoes, leaning in. You know that kiss when they're on the tiptoes and the bottom half of the calf almost creases, and he his legs buckle as she reaches in, and it says kiss, kiss, kiss. She's making out with him, and she says, "Oh, darling, it's so wonderful to see you." Next frame, Dagwood standing there going. She just spoiled one of the best rotten moods I've ever had. Huh. Well, fuck you, Dagwood. The glass is always half empty with that guy. I mean, if he could, if he could just for a moment get out of his own head and, and if he could read the comic strip that he's in, I think he'd read it three or four times and go, I need to make some major changes. <laughs> she better not read it. She'll leave that guy. Yes. Yes, nobody needs perspective on this relationship. It's a one-sided relationship. It's almost like she's locked in the house and not exposed to the outside world and what her status would really be if she yeah. if she could be in public. And if you listened to this, your own podcast, and looked at this unbelievable obsession, you'd be like, I should share that with my family. They really don't know who I am. <laughs> they really, Mike, we did it. Oh we get God. another right. Sunday paper. You know what we do now? We take it, we yes. put a fish in it, we wrap it up a little bit. I make a high-tech, overthought, over-executed, giant paper airplane. I'm going to throw it off my balcony in the shape of a hat. It's going to fall on a guy. That's what I'm I doing take, with my paper. I take some of that silly putty. I rub it across the ink. I make a little imprint on the silly putty. Yeah. Remember that? I get chicken wire, I make some sort of little, uh, like a sculpture, and I cover it with this stuff and plaster a Paris, and uh, I'm, I'm off to the races with my sculpture. And there we go. Well, listen, folks, if you're uh, enjoying the Sunday podcast, don't forget, Thursday, we give you a little 20-minute taste, a little bit more. Check it out. And then uh, also check out our Instagram videos that come out on Sunday and, I don't know, Tuesday or Wednesday, we do a second one uh, on either of our Insta. What's your Instagram feed, Mike? Gibbons time. Mine is Greg Fitzsimmons. And Whoa, uh wasn't taken. Okay. Uh don't forget Fitzdog Radio comes out on Wednesdays, childish every Tuesday with Allison Rosen. And uh we will catch you guys next time. All righty. Take it easy. God ish. bless. Sandwich already today. Make me a sandwich today. Yeah, yeah. I'm making up some words right now. Right now. COVID is escaping us. No way, no how. You're a stupid twat. I find that offensive. And if I said that, I'm gonna apologize a lot. 
Sunday, Sunday papers. Sunday, Sunday papers. Sunday papers with Mike Gibbons and Ray Gibbons.